Hi, thanks for coming. Cal is the author of two books of poetry. Uh, the um, Violence of the Morning is the more recent one, and the first is called Candy Necklace. Um, Cal's um, scholarly, critical, and uh, and poetic credentials are too numerous to enumerate here, so I'll just talk about his work. In the artist's workshops of 15th century Florence, I've heard, a master might have assigned a particularly gifted apprentice the task of rendering just the hands of the apostles on an unfinished canvas. Or, if the young artist's passions were ornithological, she might perhaps have confined herself to painting only the birds which graced the background. I like to imagine a whole array of pictorial specialists at work in the period. Cloud specialists, drapery specialists, river specialists, specialists of the cross. If Calbedian were working as a painter at this historical moment, I think that he would be an angel expert. Bedient does angels better than anybody since Rilke. For every angel a preposition begins the poem Insatiability in Bedient's second collection, The Violence of the Morning. And if, as Rilke testifies, every angel is terrifying, then Bedient's account of what I never saw before, an angel's genitals streaming in two directions, and the last of these a moderate color, modulated to flamingo, combines the visionary force of a postmodern Ezekiel with a dandy's eye for the perfect shade of pink. Like the flame-drawn moths which descend upon the first person at the beginning of his collection, Candy Necklace, Bedian's angels are always already under the threat of extinction, their ethereal habitat shot through by a technocratic modernity. I saw the millions of data crowded on the head of a pin. The angelic orders here are replaced by the regime, both cosmetic and computational, of silicon, the materia poetica of an information age. What authentic music can possibly arise from our difficult predicament? Perhaps one might fashion a song that records the brutal, tragicomic death rattle of a whale choked by an angel. Perhaps a poetry that wants both to burn and to heal at the same time, like wine poured on frozen fingers. Maybe a poetry that can address us in our difficult condition directly, like Rilke's sonnet on the statue of Apollo, but now with an even more problematic sense of futurity. What you cannot think will be your life. The wound that drives the speaker into song is at once deeply individual. Consider when the gods put on meter where an elegy for the mother leads to the heartbreaking utterance, every bone in the rain is broken. And at the same time, this wound is utterly abstract. One of the poems in The Violence of the Morning is called Pasting Nothing in the Wound. In a deep sense, for obedient, the wound is the world a world which can pierce one under trees with the sight of the caterpillar gods vast in their gauzy hammocks, or a lizard doing push-ups on a rock, or even a house fly's small engine whine of winged garbage as it bangs its head against the window. In this world, the generative act of love may be understood as a mortal wounding. When you rooted in her, writes the poet to his father, you drilled a grave, a grave, digging a grave in a grave. Most importantly, 
The world within these poems is like our own world, one in which we are pained from the outset by our capacity to feel. What is feeling that you can throw it away so cheaply, asks Bedient. And it is a question that contemporary poets would do well to consider. Return, world, says the poet, and he means it. You can only utter such an imperative if you've suffered the difficulty of watching your world withdraw, fade, or worse, fall apart. This angelologist of a secular sky has indeed suffered the witness of watching the parts of his world turn into pieces. And I saw the pins removed from the meat and sky. What you're about to hear is the str- an angular, wiry, calamitous music, one part Stein, one part Stephen Dedalus, and a generous dash of nerve. A little shadow invents go fly. It is the difficult music of carrying on. Grief, you bridge. Get on with it. Please welcome Cal Beauty. Thank you, Chiku, for that uh, lovely, uh, all too generous introduction. Um, before I forget to announce it, I brought several copies of Volt magazine, the poetry magazine. I'm co-editor of the magazine. They are um, copies of last year's issue, but, um, but the new issue isn't out yet, so it's the current issue. Uh, there's a, there uh, is a poem by uh, Srikanth Sh- Reddy. There's a poem by Andrew Zawacki. I believe he was here last year. And uh, there are well, numerous poets in the issue, and you might take a look at it. It's um, bargain price, ten dollars instead of thirteen. Uh, if you want to, um, if you want to get a copy, and if you want to subscribe, that would be even better. Now, I'll begin with a, a few poems from uh, Candy Necklace, the first book. Uh, two poems from the first section. There are five sections in the book. I used to know why, but I do know that the first section um, contains poems that are about a frustrated longing for the metaphysical. And the rest of the uh, collection just gives up (laughs) on longing for the metaphysical. But I, I will read two poems from that section. The first of them being a poem that refers to angels. 10,000 years stood out from shaved heads and listened. The subtitle of this poem is the premiere of Messian's Quartet for the End of Time, in Gerlitz, Silesia, 1941. Messian, as you know, was an avant-garde French composer. Uh, he was in a prisoner of war camp in 1941 in what I believe is now uh, in Poland, Silesia. And uh, he wrote a quartet for the end of time there. <clears throat> there were 5,000 prisoners, 4,999 other prisoners. Um, and um, one of them had a clarinet, one of them had a cello, and um, you know, one had uh, a violin. And the camp administration was kind enough to truck in an old upright piano uh, to complete the quartet. And it was performed then to the 5,000, approximately 5,000 uh, prisoners. These were, these were mostly Catholics, as Messian was. The Quartet for the End of Time is in several uh, sections which have titles, and the titles refer to angels, trumpets, birdsong. Messian, as uh, most of you will know, imitated uh, birdsong often in his music. And um, the line, O fowl that fly in the open firmament of heaven, is from the Bible. I have a tendency to overexplain, but I'll just stop at that point. Okay. This is why my children could never bear for me to read bedtime stories to them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> um, 
10,000 ears stood out from shaved heads and listened. Tearing our roots together with the branches of birds, tearing everything, and this is love. Can we imagine God's unhappiness that we are not with him? He protects us from it with angels more naked even than this music. So this music seems to say, no, not naked, not nothing, like putting your arm into light all the way up to the shoulder, nothing beside this clarinet, giddiness of heralding birds, as if birds didn't drop the shit of the earth on the earth, didn't drop dead there. O oh, fowl that fly in the open firmament of heaven, first darlings of the morning. This violin pulling a cloth of mist from its sanctuary of cries, giving heart to the piano that clomps like a tree, learning to hop. This cello wailing high and higher, a whale choked by an angel. A castrator thing, all without show of arrangement, as in a forest when whatever must sing goes ahead and does it. What was the stalag to think? Was the cesspool suddenly burnished as a lake of lions? Did diarrhea stop? Did scarlet fever snow through the branches of the music? Did the holes in the fence pass through the holes in the fence unmolested? The Belgian attaché forget to remember to announce again that the Holy See had ruled out danger? This is not recorded, nor what was changed by this unbearable blare, the clarinet crawling all the way into a single note of itself, less and more than itself, swelling it monstrously, forgetting it stops, forgetting itself, a laser of sound boring through everything till history is what no one has to. As when in a forest whatever has sung at the exact moment of its need ceases and the silence at first unawares howls like an angel who can stand no more of it. That was the show of it. It was the end of music. It was survived by music. These angels with seven trumpet throats, did you think they would be lilies, that God was a pollen? An angry gang of octaves jamming the ears with their avant-garde holiness, holier than thou holiness, shouting in the face of women and France, shouting the Alps into grave mounds. Still, the men were patient. How good they were. Never was I listened to with such rapt attention and comprehension. As if the music could take back the dropped boot of eternity. As if God would stay up all night for them. As if the music that made light of their flesh could make light of their flesh. The second poem in this section is called um, Back a Van Gogh yellow. The air feels punished after you speak. You're one of the incurables. I love that in you. Sometimes when I think of you, my sex climbs, falling time like a canoe lifting itself up on end. It doesn't know there is anything in it. Then it loses all. You want it that way, ignorant of grammar, like God. To be with you is to be around you, skirting the sizzling rococo of your circuits. Life, you say, is the greatest nothing exactly imagined. Red gold on the wall, the ellipsoid smear of the sun. And you, a shoe gashed open to hold all the light inside you, that leaves you. Appearances grease you. I hold the lamp as with a cold hand and a cold hand you slash the unmasterable gulf. Look, if I cover the lamp, 
The mast lights on the fishing boats shine among the lowest stars. But you want the sun to rise, ringed by red waves, in a brief shudder of sympathy. The sky is not a reflection of the sea. You believe that. You believe that. I'm going to read a poem um, from the middle section of the book, which um, contains mostly family poems. GQ has already quoted uh, one of the lines. Uh, It's an elegy. It's called uh, The Dead Put Up a Bad Fight. The title is from uh, Artaud. Uh, and there's, there's another borrowing or two from Artaud in, uh, in the poem. The poem is in multiple sections divided by bars, bar lines. And it ends in prose. The, ba- the dead put up a bad fight. When I get to the other side, I'm going to bang up hard against him and start fucking. If a chicken makes it across the road, it can do anything. It can fuck anybody. I, who was superior because I came after, cry like a shell to a bird. My every other breath abandoned by another man's lungs, the rest sucked up by them. What vampire would sup the blood from eyeballs as this grief does? Lying in wait a whole lifetime, hungry. On August 10, 1977, the powers of heaven stopped. The dead man did not attend his own funeral. He was buried without his knowledge. His Ellensburg agate blue eyes are in the dirt. His Ellensburg blue agate ring is in an envelope. The envelope is in a crystal sunk beneath night. I open it when I sob through deep distances. I look it in the eye and go blind. A single spider bathes in a single tear, and this destruction shall be radical. A single man directs the clouds, and this a tortured man. Landscape of strong convulsions, each grave a burst of flame. The shovel pokes to find a hero wanting a meal. The wound dark, the salt in the wound glitters. We walked in a field, remember? Yours blue, mine green, and my brother's brown. Six eyes looking for the Ellensburg blue. Who had taken them all? Who would give them back? A madman has taken them all. They are in the washing machines. They are bluing the underwear. My heart passes its breath through a tube in the ground. My father breathes coughs, swears, moans. What do I want? Hasn't he had enough to put up with? The night of the dismissal is still on him. The 30 hills of the Kittitas Valley stand on his chest. Seeping rain slides down his cheeks. So would I get the hell off? Would I put, pull this damn thing from his nose? You'd harumph even if I brought you the night vase of stars. You're no woman man wanting love, but you'll take these chrysanthemums, dried yellow clouds of a brown moon lately seen staining heaven. I say take them, smell them, feel their dead weight on your face. Now I'm the boss. I, your chicken-livered son, your pain in the ass. A spider, 
a tear. I'll tell you what I want minimum. Another feel of your straight up white crew cut carpet of silk bristles and nails. How can I reach you? What sense is the hardest to kill? Among these ruins, the fresh stench of an opened can of heart. Come, Blackie, come out from behind the stone. Your bulldozer lifts its incise lip beside mother's shepherd and sheep. Now she says she'll rest elsewhere. She won't lie down with the wolf. She's not in a fairy tale anymore. She won't lie down with the wolf. When they let your coffin into the hole, she was still the loud-talking queen of the tragedy. Oh, Dad, don't mind. You owed her. Whoever had listened before. Yes, for so, you owed her. And now she's withdrawn as before. I'll lay her beside you, stiff as on that first night and every other, even before you took her with a vicious look. A man like you took her apart when she was six. You bore with her madness. She owes you. When you rooted in her, you drilled a grave, a grave, digging a grave in a grave, and this destruction shall be radical. Not anyone is tall and very likely anymore. Wind over the graves, Fins brushing against the stones. I swim the dark for a whiff of your blood, my all of you not yet dead. I swim the dark. I cruise the zones of convulsion, tap the jars of funerary sperm. I'll find you. I'll not let you go, not all of you, not everything. I'll carry the dear part inside like a child, a living child, my brave stone. At your funeral, your body said, not here, har har, gone again, not so fast, not so radical, not all of you. I eat what I love, I eat to live, like this wind over your gravestone, this fin, this gullet moon, over bright throat of the Kittitas night, my birthlight August, this ulcer moon. Who finally came back home and said, how'd you grow up so fast? What happened to my little boy? Who coughs in this chesty wind? Come forth. I'll wait. I'll find you at corpse white dawn, the hour of your getting up to go to work, tall and likely swagger loner, coming back like a puppy to the kittitas, a bit drunk and smirky after all those years, singing Red River Valley and the someone who loves you so true, singing I get along without you very well. Well, we got along without you. Were you God, a particle that mattered, subtracted, added? But I have a hunger for you tonight. I'm your luck. I have a craw. It was a mistake to make me if you couldn't take me. You'll not escape this time. I eat what I blame. I cry hard when I fuck. I'm crossing the road. Yes, look surprised. Do. It suits you, old poker-faced at love. Take a swing at me. Do. It suits you. I'm crossing the road. The poems in the last section of Candy Necklace turn to the um, sufferings of others. I'll read one poem from that section called Can That Be She? It's based on an actual incident which was reported um, in the Seattle area, which was reported in the uh, Seattle paper. This is the bathroom where he let her clean herself up, disgusting blood rag. This is the horizon color that held the pistol. This is the pistol that shot light into the shadow men at the firing range. 
These are the bullets her watery fingers jammed into the pistol, for God's sake, mean it. You can imagine the yelp of the animal boy. He pissed himself here in the jeans. This is the hand the gun yesed. Yes, she could wait one more minute before firing again. It was because 911 said don't kill him that she didn't kill him. The voice wanted to know his age. She asked him, how old are you going to be when you die? He said, 21. She said to the voice, 21. These are the policemen who broke through her door. She wasn't hearing them. This, the nakedness, shocked back into itself as they stared. They wanted to wrench her nose straight again. Jagged teeth, she must have bitten the little bastard to the bone. The dental assistants called her Amazon. She knew she wasn't in this world anymore. You can hear the women's voices lined up in the courtroom to hecker him. Hector him. This is the violent boy. Look at me, bitch, when I come sitting sour, alone. The same who'd felt sunflower tissuey pooled and warm when he got back in. The same who hit her nose, her ear, when he entered her because he would not give in. This is his sentence, 66 years. This is hers. How climb the ladder to the woman she was? How cut the new screen without slicing her skin? How wake her without letting her see the woman no longer in the world. The woman who suffered this attack and survived it so heroically went into uh, a store called Open Books in Seattle a year or two after this book was published and bought up all the copies of Candy Necklace in, uh, in the store. It's a poetry emporium, so there actually were several copies of Candy Necklace. And I, uh, the, the, the clerks told me about this, and I talk to them every summer when I go up to Seattle. And I said, oh, was she upset? And they said, no, she was glad that she wrote that poem. Going on to the second book. I didn't see what time I started. How long your reading is usually about 50 minutes? Depends upon how the reader, how it's going. It's like, do I hear 25? It's like, <laughs> um, I'm going to, uh, to read uh, a long poem um, called Go to the Middle of Anything, It is a River. It, um, it in part a response to a book on the uh, uh, on adults who had been children in the Windermere retention camp, obviously in England, uh, survivors of the Holocaust. I think that in almost every case they were they were uh, children of, of German parents who had been killed in the camps, and it. Um, it consists of ten uh, sections, and each section begins uh, with uh, a little, little epigraph of its own, often a fragment, I think always a fragment. And there are a number of quotations from and allusions to nursery rhymes. I suppose they came in because I was thinking of the children in the Windermere camp. Go to the middle of anything, it is a river. One, appointed so as not to be too wide. I curl the pincers, uh, sorry, I curl the pencil's hair in the sharpener, blow on its blonde, like a Mary, a constant girl, The rabbit, electrical light, smells my spine. Sunshine is many come. Who marries the green side of the air? 
B is appointed so as not to let it be too wide. You program off, you stumpy dark. Have you missed your appointed? Is your life like a running horse with a foot in each instant? I've tied it so often, I'll tie it no more. Two. I say to the hum, bist du mein? Was irritated by now. Said go to the paint brush, dragging the invisible. Said no to the girls, alligatoring in the dust. All is a come to fears. Unappointed ahead, unappointed behind. Bist du, asked Burley in the Windermere retention camp. Bist du mine? You must never leave your children. Always you must stay with them. The smallest boy crawled up the curtain and hissed. I think I love you, mother, like a station where one passenger waits. Three. Chardin's man blows worlds out the window, oh. I say to the sky circle, this do mine. I think I love the scalp up of the air, mother clouds, flock breasts of light. Will you know me, mother? Do not trust this photo. I cannot look portrait from a train. I am breath, film of earth, boy aired, boy expendable. Trailing his stick leg up the curtain, oh, spitting Jew. No, said the sparrow, I won't make a stew. So he clapped his wings and away he flew. He flew and he flew and he flew. Four, pain brush dragging the visible for its dead. I once for the wind cried in the greater pines. Twice for the tiger lily spattered my blood. Said, oh, to the hermaphrodite sailor scratching his stubble, if this be he, lost his baby overboard? Couldn't be. I was whom, sorry, it was whom made me know we are clouds. The first distance was difficult, the second not allowed. With three piano keys on the Lorquan Admiral's wing, I made a music like a crane asleep. The first note, unappointed, the second, diffident, the third, not allowed. Five, pencil reappointed was irritated by now. All come without knowing into what they have come. Will be coming to be a long time. One found no kindness in words. One said, I speak your language now, okay? Always they went where they were told. Magda cried. The German prisoners had new shoes. In 12 sugars, well, is it bitter again? Who isn't washed away in 10 rails of blood? On eight hooks the flesh of somebody's song. In four forests the hero's bowels. Six. And laughing, Icarus caught the feathers that blew away in the wind. I stepped on day's snail. What had it done to me? Like me, it had eaten, drunk, and loved in its stone shoe. That day, down by the slap lake, her mouth a snail in puff pastry, her thighs limbs of hunger sprouting leaves of now. Unappointed in uncut grass, she came, she went. Is this what is called a story? Tongues an animal could wish a place is gain. Is such a pretty bird if bushed the summer over. Trundle in my wooden snail, I mean to conquer the garden. Seven, if they look and sigh, I will go with them. The shears of the air are flying, crying, 
blind, I stepped for three days on snails. My scalp plowed up by the river's roar. Then my son's letter, crumpled morning glory, capsized in the cabin window's vineweed river rush reflection. He never loved his wife? Is she to know? Always you must stay with them. Really irritated by now, like a geranium petted by three rifles. If the peeled off robin red breasts on the maples turn and sigh, I'll go with them. This train, where does it go? Please, I speak your language now. Eight, go to the middle of anything. It is a river. This is none of I. The moon won't bark. Spaces kiss like Suki's, wife off the mark. Whom did you mean me to be? Say it, space. North of the calendar, I'm a train's furious slipper. Blow soft till the fruit's in the loft. The pears, the living rich and fine. Divorce is in the water. Cataract of train light, lungs battling volumes of exotic, like the silver wife whom Diller sold to the miller, wouldn't have her, so he threw her in the river. Nine. Bad love is an ash and a few stars. I caught sight of a splendid muses. Night is there over and out. I look up, butterfly cut of underpop- underpopulated heart. You cold tonight, honey? I mean you, night. You've spent so many nights with me. Like a stuck gate. Did God dip himself all that fire in dust and call it love? The moon doesn't need to know she's in your room, who flows lawlessly in from all sides. Why doesn't light paw at the shell of whom? A hard case. Ten, what ails the light not alling all the rose? I do not like thee, Dr. Fell, whose pigs are the cooks, I know by their looks, married to grease, bedded in gel. Where's the cloud calamine, soothes the irritation? I'm a little dishy, where I am is fishy. I dance for my dears, who perplex me, who aren't a constant girl. Bist do mine, said the apple to space. Come sit on the ground, said space. Many are already here. The sailor who had a red face, the snails, burly on the platform, blurred by the speed of the train. I had seen, a, um, I think, a, a Jerry Springer show. Am I, am I getting the name right? It seems so long ago. Um, and... Um, a, a hermaphrodite who was the most virile looking man I've ever seen um, with like 20 days growth of beard on his face um, was telling about his life as a sailor and how he did once had a baby and it was, yeah, it's like, so <laughs> I'm not sure why it's in the poem but it was unforgettable <laughs> so, uh, One uh, final poem from the second book, uh, The Violence of the Morning. The, the poems in the last section of the book are upbeat. Um, and this one is called, called Feathers, Wives Are All Good Looking. Flute, flute, this is not change. The news? A tiny bit of flutter. Up on the stalk, the bleeding heart utters out of beds. The whole garden dips and behaves. And should I pony to little bed? Horse me to the table morning like a winning cake. Daylight has laps of 
breath for us, legs for us. Morning gate has legs for us who would not pony to little bed. Why which then without difference when? Why pearl without lily elaboration? Cow lie down, horse be our baby blues, horse be our column of wasps. Flute, oh, peculiar new kneeler on the air, any bottoming by breath's early light, virile butte carved clear, is feather weight to you, who would not pony to little bed. So, feather my bench, feather the weather, feather, 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 feather. Paths, Jack, philosophy strews with jumbo jacks for us, the little train in the mouth that stops and goes for us, the vanilla of 7 a.m., the cinnamon of noon, will get us there, as the moon in the sky is a blossom in the water. Out of the window of outside phenomena, one leg out, one leg ahead, would not pony too little bed. I'm going to um, read, uh, end with a few poems from what I hope will will be a a third book. Um, A number of the poems have a letter in the title with the color preceding. Um, There's an explanation for that, but for once I won't go into it. Uh, The first poem is called The the Red Letter, um, and the subtitle is Contemporary Poetry. And it's a mixture of verse lines and prose. I think of these poems as uh, hybrids. Myth. What is myth? Breath pant of the rose, the panther of it departing. What is poetry? Stern evaporative seating before a hole in a painted winter. Think of the muse's back, cold despite the blanket of canvas, shirtless in the oil. Myth doesn't want to step into the excrement of meaning, so it steps into its ocean instead, which is buttered on both sides. Inherently in excess of itself, language resembles it, the rot in it bigger than the apple. uh, There are are numerous asterisks, in case you're wondering, uh, about the disconnectedness it's built into the poem. The improbable character of modern poetry comes from acting as flypaper to myth, hints to language. Art has become transparent to itself, down to the very core, which is the constitutive nature of illusion, Adorno. It dreams of being an antinature, an absolute no, or even just the toothpaste tube squeezed empty and torn open to where the murderous shining is but it is sticky still with, with meaning is sticky still. The red in the lower right is a watcher with that kind of nastiness. Where is the horse bus, the arrow green, the ghost of a white horse startled by a white horse? So post-war, these children licking their spin wheels in the sea wind. The work that leaves everyone confounded is precisely a work for everyone, bad you. I've got nothing to give you, baby, but a stretch in the pinned. Fellow, follow, for fell, feel, for likely by a stretch of time, Gertrude Stein. But one wants to say to contemporary poetry, think of the idea of water, the idea of wind. See a person in the idea. See how he fits exactly there in Ithaca, at the edge of the campus, standing where the gray rain vomits on the gray water. As it is, as it was, keep him in sight, 
be a little human. This has been a test, Peter. Your eyes always look 20, if it means now, even now, the way we felt then, made a day there, which is here even, a cake half as admittedly as large as your mouth, Sarah, if you say so. Oh, honey, fish as many as that look pink in a good singer. Contemporary poetry can neither live with meaning nor avoid it. It knows that form has a responsibility toward truth and represents that knowledge, but in a misery of X nomination, what would ease it is love, the only human gift that still needs no apology. And yet oneself always already wandered. How love the already wandered, how love anything else. If I were to write a letter, I would think of very clear water, but I would address to you any figure that stood out, everything that is oar-shaped, sharpened to cut through the nothing, sawing and whacking at it, if necessary. The jutting building on the left, oxide of chrome, green roof edge, the horses nasturtium colored behind, the deep prussic depression of the rider, my blue boy, your hand still feeling along the wet eaves for the stream's root, your right leg upright on the head of the distant lawn, atheist in the marketplace. That's a masterpiece. She's flossing, married to a dentist. I wanted you to stay home. The next poem uh, is uh, called um, well, I think I'll skip that one and uh, go to a shorter poem, The Yellow Yellow Letter. He was battered out dreary from his stay in the infantry. Ran his knife through the ear of a walkie-talkie, called it getting the president's attention. We fear he will never return to the dishevelment of ambiguity. Out of the lip-sync sky dropped a cockroach as big as the kitchen sink, called it a cockroach as big as the kitchen sink. We fear he will soon be repeating himself. It's like watching Ted Koppel's mother combing his hair on Nightline. All the Iraqi POWs wanted to talk about was bananas, someone said. We may never again be cracked up to be. I'm so afraid to losing you who don't give a shit no more. I miss something to go crazy about. I wish I had a bowl of sparrows sparrows to feed to. I wish I could speed somebody's beauty around. The twish of George W. Bush is singing from our cabana. He called this one singing full-throated from the Oval Room. And now for my imitation of waved wands of corn in the land you loved so well, back in the eventide, letting darkness down easy. Uh, I'll end with a poem that I wrote uh, a couple of years ago in in Florence. Um, The title is Va Pensiero from Aida. Go, pensiveness. Orion with his foot to the pedal. Splats, rain sowing light to the window, the please repeat the last signal hurdle, the we go forward and back and there is no place hurdle. Leave us, for itches, we give you this advice. Leave us side stitches, a whole simmer, summer is to lease. A green bench, winged messages parked on Mercury's bronze arms, 
a daisy chain of big and runty dogs, the gothic bracket of a standing egret, half flesh, half water, punctuating the Arno with a brilliant white. Unhitch, provokers, we give you this advice. Remove your stretcheth forth the heaven's robes. Swim like a bucket among the berries. Yes, plain bitches, be gone, for along the avenue the beauties are strolling. They transactions fetishes. Fox furs flopping on their fabulous behind. Who has the same gawk as another has a coral neck. Who takes the same description is the same ghost. It is sensible then to be bold. Leave us, snitches. We are eager to plant strawberry mentions on your graves. Your noise is as feckless as the bomb that broke the Ponte Santa Trinita. Yes, poor ditches, we have news for you. They recut every stone. They fetched the primavera's head from the Arno and put it back on her neck. The beautiful, broken-nosed thing, they put it back on her neck. Thank you.